Good morning all. Today we are going to discuss the parallel operation of alternators under no load conditions. Let us assume uh, there are two alternators. One is the alternator 1 and the second alternator is there. Let us assume both the EMF generated by both the alternators is same. And let us assume ZS1 and ZS2 as the respective synchronous impedance of the alternators. Let us assume the terminal voltage is 400 volts and frequency is 50H. So what will be the effect of change in the excitation? Because here two parameters are there which can change. One is excitation and the second one is change in the prime over input. So what is the effect under no load conditions? Actually, I want to demonstrate about what is the synchronizing power and how it is getting synchronized. Because in the last class, I have told you that synchronizing power I will discuss during parallel operation because this will be required while discussing about the parallel operation in practice. So let us take the first case. What is the effect of change in excitation? So when the excitation is changed, what is going to affect? So for that, let me draw the equivalent circuit of this alternators. So let us assume this is one alternator, this is the second alternator. So EMF produced by this alternator is E1, second one is E2. So this is my value of ZS1 and ZS2. So this is my value of terminal voltage. Voltage is V and the frequency is F. So let us assume the excitation of the first generation is increased. So let us assume the generator if you take in this loop, in this loop if you take, so let us take this E1 as my reference, if you are taking E1 as reference, then E2 will be out of phase with this because both are in opposite direction because E2 is like this plus minus, this one is plus minus in this loop, both are in opposite so that the sum will be equal to 0. So now due to the excitation, let us assume my EMF induced in the first generator is increased, it is increased to E1 dash. So whenever the EMF is increased, now because of that, now the E1 dash is there, second one is E2, because of difference in the voltages, the current will start circulating. So let us assume that current that is circulating is given by the value of ISY. So I am just writing this, this ISY is called as the synchronizing current. So this comes because the change in the excitation or the increase in the voltage. So this is ISY is passing because of the voltage ESY which is the difference of E1 dash minus E2. So this is called as the synchronizing voltage. Because of this synchronizing voltage the current is passing. Getting it? So let us assume because of this E1 dash minus E2 divided by the impedance the current will pass. So that current will be lagging behind this by 90 degrees because the reason is here that this is also inductor this is also inductor generally the value of resistance is very less so we can treat it as a pure inductive load because we know in the pure inductive load even is supplying the current so this current will lag behind the voltage by 90 degrees so this is my isy now coming to the second generator second generator is taking the current so that's why the current which is taken because it will act like a motor so the current will lead the voltage e2 by 90 degrees so the effect of this is the first one is this value of ISY because it is lagging behind the first voltage because we have already seen whenever the current is lagging in that case the effect of armature reaction is demagnetizing. So what this ISY will do? ISA will demagnetize your machine 1 and magnetize machine what will happen because when it is demagnetized the value of E1 dash will decrease and as the machine 2 is magnetized the value of E2 will increase. That means the value of E1 dash will decrease as a result of this and E2 will increase and as a result of this your terminal voltage will increase. It will come to some equilibrium position. So this is what happens when you are changing the excitation. So this can be understood using the equations also. Let us try to write the equations. I can write my value of ISY will be equal to E1 dash minus E2 divided by ZS1 plus ZS2. So this I can write as ESY divided by ZS1 plus ZS2. So generally the ZS1 and ZS2 as the effect of resistance is very less. We can take it as a pure reactive. So automatically this ISY lags E1 or we can tell this E1 dash by 90 degrees. So we can tell that the machine 1 operates at 0 power factor lag. So this is the diagram actually for that. Similar way, so when it is operating at 0 F lag, this is the demagnetizing effect. 
so as a result of the demagnetizing effect the value of the emf will decrease getting it so now coming to machine number 2 machine number 2 operates at zpf lead because the current is leading the respective voltage so this is equal to the effect of magnetizing so when it is magnetizing the value of e2 will increase so as a result of this the resultant emf will come and it will stabilize at the tm of the effect is your terminal voltage will increase remember here that this effect is only due to the magnetization effect it is not related to the active power so this i have already discussed while discussing the synchronizing power it depends on what is responsible for the change in the values so let us try to calculate the synchronizing power so if you want to calculate the synchronizing power we already derived this in our last class this will be equal to the voltage multiplied by the current that is passing current passing is isy multiplied by cos of the angle between voltage and the current so the voltage is e1 dash and the current is isy so this is for the first machine so this will be equal to nearly equal to 90 degrees because if you are neglecting the resistance similarly i can write ps2 will be equal to e2 into isy into cos of the angle again the angle is 90 degrees because it is leading only only lagging leading difference is there so this also will be equal to 0 this also will be equal to 0 so we can tell that the synchronizing power the active power is equal to 0 now coming to the reactive power the synchronizing reactive power again same way i can calculate e1 dash isy instead of cos it will be sin so it will be sin of the angle this becomes sin 90 this will be equal to e1 dash into isy and qs2 will be equal to e1 dash isy into sin of minus 90 degrees so this will be equal to minus e2 into isy you can see here the synchronizing reactive power is positive for the first machine and negative for the second machine because of this effect of the synchronizing power reactive power the emf of one machine is decreased the second machine is increased so that your terminal voltage is affected affected and there is no change in the active power because synchronizing active power is equal to zero in this case i hope this is clear to you now let us see what will be the effect of change in mechanical input so whenever mechanical input changes so what is going to happen so again i am drawing so let us assume this is my machine 1 zs5 and i am taking my machine 2 this is zs2 so this is connect to an alternator this alternator there is a field okay these alternators are connected together so these are connected to some prime mover this is connected to prime mover 2 let us assume initially they are running like this so initially let us assume they are running at 1500 rpm this is also running at 1500 rpm so as a result of this your terminal voltage is coming which is equal to 400 volts and frequency becomes equal to 50 h so now what happens let us assume the mechanical input to machine 1 is increased so mechanical input to the machine one is increased so initially when the machines are operating just under no ideal conditions both the emfs are same so this is my e1 this is my value of e2 so as both are opposite to each other so net resultant is equal to zero so there is no the synchronizing component of the current now what happens when the mechanical input to machine one increases so the speed of the machine increases so when the speed increases automatically frequency of the machine one increases the frequency of the machine increase that i can represent because we know that the phasors generally when they are rotated they are represented in counter clockwise direction counter clockwise direction indicates they are leading so because of this change in the frequency or the speed let us assume this temporarily this emf becomes leading this previous value of e1 by some angle let us take it as e1 dash remember here that there is no change in the emf because the excitation is same only there is a displacement by some angle so it is displaced by some angle so because of this there is a resultant value so we can take the resultant of this resultant of e1 and e2 so that gives my value of esy esy is the vector sum of these two emfs because of this the current will pass that current again this we know that the circulating current that passes it is passing through a pure inductive circuit so we can tell that the current will be lagging because this is isy it will be lagging this by 90 degrees it is lagging esy by 90 degrees getting it so this shift will come so let us assume this angle let us assume it is shifted by some angle phi now what will be the consequence so i can tell my value of isy will be equal to e1 
minus e2 e1 dash minus e2 divided by zs1 plus zs2 or this i can write as this value of es5 divided by zs1 plus zs2 this is what i can tell so practically what happens generally the value of isy will be the angle difference between e1 dash and isy is very less so this can be taken as equal to 0 degrees practically so that's why i can calculate my synchronizing power of the first one and the second one so synchronizing power one will be equal to e1 dash into isy into cos of the angle the angle is very small i can take it as nearly equal to 0 degrees so this will become as e1 into isy so this is the one so second one the synchronizing power will be equal to e2 into isy into cos of the angle between them so cos of the angle between e2 and isy if you take this angle this angle is 180 degrees nearly so this will become cos 180 degrees cos 180 degrees will be minus so this will become minus e2 into isy this minus sign indicates it will act as a motor this plus sign indicates it will act as a generator so this is what happens now coming to the reactive power the synchronizing power i can tell qs1 is equal to e1 into isy into sine of the angle this is sine 0 it becomes 0 similarly qs2 will be e2 into isy into sine 180 degrees this will also be equal to 0 so we can tell that the synchronizing power is not reactive the synchronizing power is active power so the effect of the active power will be there will be change in the speed so machine one there will be opposition because of this so the speed of the machine one decreases as a result of this and the speed of second machine the speed of second machine is increasing because it will act as a motor because this energy is supplied to second machine so speed of the second machine increases so as an effect of this the both will come to a common frequency or we can tell the effect of increasing the steam input of any one machine is there will be a net result increase in the frequency so i am just summarizing it the two alternators operating under no load condition first one if if excitation of machine one is increased then automatically what happens the frequency of the set when the excitation is increased so voltage of the set will increase so this is the effect we observe and machine one will supply to machine number two so this way and if you want to maintain your terminal voltage constant what is the alternative to do decrease the excitation of machine number two so if you want to maintain v is equal to constant what we have to do the excitation of machine two should decrease so that now voltage will be normalized so coming to the second one when the mechanical input of machine one is increased the effect is the frequency of the set is increased so this is what happens so if you want to maintain the frequency constant so what you have to do we have to decrease the mechanical input to machine number two when you decrease the mechanical input to machine number two then automatically net result effect will be decrease in the frequency so it will be compensated this is what is done practically i hope the synchronizing power and parallel operation of alternators under no road condition is clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer from there so in the next class we are going to discuss about parallel operation of alternators under loaded conditions thank you thank you very much